Praises, glory, and honor be unto our blessed God. Good morning to everyone who is listening in today, who is a part of this worship. Uh, we are celebrating in a new month now. This is the month of July 2020, first Sunday. Thanks be to God that the Lord has allowed us to be found in this moment at this time. And so even now the Lord is certainly worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, our God is worthy to be praised. So I give him glory today and I thank him for all that he is doing, continue to do, and certainly I'm looking forward to the future of what the Lord has in store for all of us. And so I do say to God be the glory to, for all the things he has done. Uh, let me also say uh, to, uh, to Pilgrim and Mount Zion and, and our many friends uh, that are listening in today, just continue to pray fervently as the Lord give us direction, as the Lord guide us to our next moment in what we call the new normal. Let me also tell you, be safe, wear your mask in public, yes, Social distance, yes. We certainly continue to love each other from heart to heart. Um, the Lord is in control, and I do declare that everything is going to be all right. Now let's worship together, everybody, as we celebrate the Lord. Uh, wherever you are, wherever you're sitting, bless the Lord with a hand clap of praise. Bless His name because the Lord is worthy. Let's share our praise and worship. Let's have a good time. Today on this Sunday morning, God bless you and God keep you is my prayer.
to receive our best praise. And it is through his high name, the matchless king. We bless you, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I will bless the Lord. go up the tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem. It shall prosper and love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord, I come. I will seek thy good. The word of God for the people of God. Will you bow with me in a moment of prayer? Our Father and our God, how we thank you for the blessings of another day. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to receive your faithfulness, your favor, certainly your mercy. Each moment in time that God belongs to you, and because of this day, we lift up your name on high. We give you thanks, and Lord, we give you praise. I thank you, O oh God, for all that you continue to do. Keep us ever lifted. Lift our hearts that we, we may be feel, feeling broken, O oh God. Restore us, O oh God, where we may feel incomplete. Let us know, O oh God, that you will take care of us, but you promised us you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And so, God, we thank you for this day. I thank you for the Pilgrim Church family. Mount Zion Church family and all churches that are open in the name of God. We are in perilous times, but God let us ever lean and depend on you. I pray, oh God, even in days when we don't know what to say, God allow your spirit to reign supreme. Lead us to the throne of prayer. Lead us to the throne of grace. Knowing, God, that even in these times, that you ought to still be praised. So, God, I praise you with all that I have today. I praise you for all that I am today, God, because it is because of you that I stand in this place of worship one more Sunday morning, God. So, Lord, I pray that you would have your way now. Have your way now, God. Not that I should be glorified, Lord, but that you must be lifted right now, God. But Lord, we thank you right now for Jesus Christ. He died for us. He suffered on our behalf. That when this life shall be ended, that there will be a resting place that is prepared just for us. So Lord, I thank you for this time. Thank you for this moment. Pray this prayer as always in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And thank God. Thank you, Jesus.
let me again say welcome. Uh, and uh, you know, we, we don't always need a welcome address, a words of welcome when we are in the house of God, because it has been paid on Calvary that we have this opportunity to be welcomed into the presence of the Lord. And I will say, enjoy the Lord wherever you are. Because we never know when it will be our last day. We are going to take a moment in our worship uh, to give through our offerings, our tithes. Uh, we have this opportunity now that you can go to Givelify uh, on your smartphone and go find the Givelify app. And you can give what the Lord has blessed you to give through your tithes and your offering. Always remember there is a blessing in giving. Always remember there is a blessing in giving. Little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. So give at this moment. Uh, many thanks to the members who give, not only through Give the Five, but who continue to do your mail-ins or drop-bys. You know, we are so thankful for you uh, continuing the work of the church so that we can do what is necessary uh, going forward uh, to keep the church going and alive. And it takes not only giving, but it takes, of course, your stewardship in general. So I do thank you so much uh, for this moment of giving. Thank you, Lord, for the, the gifts that are being received at this moment through Give the Fire. Thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice of the membership and our friends who continue to worship share in the life of our church. God bless, bless each and every giver. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen and thank God. Again, my brothers and sisters, thank you for what you have given at this time. Amen. We're going to share um, in what is necessary for worship and what is necessary for worship is music. Uh, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, be thankful unto him. And bless his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Thank God for the music ministry, Brother Travis Coleman, Brother Jermaine Stein, God bless you all. Receive them as they will share in the ministry of music at this time. What the Lord has promised to you, whatever he promised, he will fulfill. You've been waiting on a blessing. Yes, sir. It seems it just won't come. Doors are shut. Things are up.
God is not blessing you. Whatever, whatever the problem, whatever, whatever, whatever the problem, he's able. Thank you, God. Lord, we thank you again for this, these moments of worship. Thank you for reminding us, reminding us, oh God, that you are not through blessing us, oh God. Lord, let us avail ourselves to you because you are so worthy. Thank you, Lord, for covering us, protecting us. Thank you, Lord, for leading and guiding us. Keep our minds, our thoughts. God, lead us along this journey, oh God, as only you can. But thank you, Lord, for continuing to bless us. And so, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable unto you, my strength and my redeemer. For it is in the blessed name of Jesus Christ we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. God. Brother Coleman is going to make us hurt ourselves. But that's all right. If the Holy Ghost don't let you hurt yourself. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. Book of Exodus for a few moments, my beloved brothers and sisters. Chapter 6. And we shall share a few verses, and that will be verses 1 to 8. Exodus chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. It will find these words written to the church, to the people of God today. Okay, at verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand, he will let them go. And with a strong hand, he will drive them out of his land. And the Lord spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, Lord, I was not known to them. I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage in which they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel whom the Egyptians kept in bondage. And I have remembered my commandment. Therefore, say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will give it to you as 
a heritage. I am the Lord. The grass wither and the flower thereof fade, but the word of God shall stand forever. So my beloved brothers and sisters, um, I would like to speak on the thought today. Our God that keeps his promises. Our God that keeps his promises. Aren't you glad wherever you are today that you can certainly celebrate that we do serve a great God who will keep his promises. Amen. Today, my brothers and sisters, we serve a God um, that is never short on his word. As a matter of fact, um, today we can declare that his word remains true. Yes. Certainly when he says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Matter of fact, as I was reading in John chapter one, verse three, it reminds me where uh, John says that Jesus, not only is he uh, the word, but he also declares in verse 3 where it says, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Because it is for us to realize today that if we hold on to the power of God himself, if we believe in the magnitude of his word, we can know today that God simply holds us in the palm of his hand. What a mighty God. What an awesome God. What, what, what a God that we can serve even in these times of confusion and problems. We can know that whatever it is that we may feel or we may be going through, it's never beyond the control of God. Today, I understand it. Uh, especially now in these days, uh, that today is an example of knowing but also being able to confess that God is who we claim he is. That the world needs to know without a doubt, my brothers and sisters, that one, that although there are unknowns, Although what exists among us may be mysterious, although what we are dealing with today may be times where we as feeble men and women cannot explain, I can always go to the Word of God. What is it that I know about the Word of God? One, uh, the Word of God reminds me that the Word is life. And since the word is life, if I get into the word, if I study the word, if, as Paul tells Timothy, he tells Timothy to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but not just that. I can also understand that the word has life because the word, if I allow the word to take root in my heart, it will lead me and it will guide me to greater things. What do I mean by that? It will answer every question that I have, but not only will it answer every question that I have, but the word of God also has the power to give me whatever I need in my life, but not just give it to me, but it will not only answer and give, but the word maybe sometimes will correct me. Put me in line. Matter of fact, if I get into the word and if I believe in the word, then I can know that the promises of God are real because if I look back over my own life, if it had not been for the word of God, if it had not been for, for knowing what, 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 what David says in, in Psalm 23, where David says, I, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want if it had not been for, for, for Paul telling the church at Rome that I, Romans that I can know that all things work together for good to them that love God. If, I, if it had not been for the writings uh, that was given to me to the church at Philippi where it, it says I have not yet attained but I press toward the mark for the prize of a high point. If it had not been for 
the word, I wouldn't be here today. But thank God. Thank God that God will always keep his promises. What an interesting text. You know, I, 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 I said, well, where does this come from? How does this text relate to what we're going through in 2020? I'm glad you asked. The reason I'm glad you asked is this. When I look at this, it helped me to understand. If I know God, I can be assured that God is not only my creator, not only my sustainer, not only my God, but he's my keeper. Okay, I'm about to help myself right here. I, I shout, don't worry about it. It, I, I, it. It'll be all right. Because if I know he's my keeper, okay, that's a story that, that maybe it'll help to relate to this particular passage of scripture. And it was a story uh, that I heard many years ago. I thought it was sort of a joke, but it's not a joke today. This is a story of a young man who was trained to be a paratrooper. And I was sharing with my church family the other day uh, that I said I had some bucket list things I wanted to accomplish in my life when I was younger. And I said one of my bucket list things uh, was that I wanted to jump off of an airplane. It may not be my bucket this thing anymore because I'm too old or something. I don't know. I'm too scary. I don't know. But I was a young man who was trained to be a, a paratrooper. And so this young man was going to take his first jump by himself. The instructor gave him a few things that he had to remember. First of all, he told him, listen, when you're told to jump, jump. Count to 10. After you count to 10, pull the rip card. If by chance the parachute does not come out, there is an emergency rip card. Pull the emergency rip card. The, the parachute will take you to a certain area waiting for you when you land. There will be a truck to pick you up and bring you back to camp. So you got it? He said, Got it. Got into the plane, my brothers and sisters, took him up 10,000 feet, and all the, para, the paratroopers in training began to jump. Now was this young man's chance. He said, jump, jumped out of the plane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pulled the rip car. Oh, no parachute. Nothing happened. Oh. Parachute does not come. Pull the second rip car, which is the emergency rip car, and the parachute shall come. He pulled the emergency rip car. Nothing happened. No parachute. So the young man, as he was free fall on his way to land, he's thinking to himself, and he said, I did what I was told to do. Pull the rip car, see, parachute didn't come. I pulled the emergency rip car, no parachute. Well, I guess the truck won't be there either when I land. Interesting. Because seemingly that looks like life. We seem to be following the instructions, especially as it relates to the word of God. I like this. And it seems like we're doing everything that the word is telling us we're, we're doing our best even to pay attention to what the what our government agencies are telling us to do that we're doing our best to stay safe and 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 and, and social distance or a physical distance whatever whatever it's called now well, we're doing our best to follow the instructions especially sense of god when it comes to the word of god and we pull the rip card no parachute we pull the emergency rip card no parachute and when we get to land, <laughs> will the truck even be there? It's interesting because when I looked at this text, not only, not only does this text deal with God's people, the children of Israel who were in bondage for over 
400 years were in a place what seemed to be a place of favor when they first got there. Then because of circumstances, they ended up prisoners in a place that should have been a place of favor. Ooh, now I'm not hitting you. Because in our lives, it all started off pretty well. I was looking at this particular card that I keep in my Bible. And this particular card was given to us at the beginning of 2020. You know what it said? So grow and prosper. And it talked about unity in 2020. And what we declared in 2020, that the Lord was going to give us clear vision. And though we looked at it in a positive way, wow, what happened? What has happened to so grow and prosper? What has happened to clear vision in 2020 is still there. Because what I find that we, one of the things that I learned, we can never give up on God. Matter of fact, and, and if we can never give up on God, then we also got to know that God has a plan. And in God's plan, he may sometimes put us in a position where we must be enslaved. Now listen, God, if he puts us in a position where we must be enslaved, I still believe today that the same God who will put us or allow us to be in a certain situation will be the same God who will deliver. God is never short on his promises. I believe come what made from day to day. Because my father watches over. He watches over me. Look at this text. And made it very clear because one thing I want you to pay close attention to, I want you to pay close attention to Moses in the text. The reason I want you to pay close attention to the Moses in the text is because Moses really was the unlikely leader to go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh or demand that the children of Israel be set free. Why is that? Because Moses had messed up. Moses had sinned. Moses could not speak properly. But God sent him anyway. Why is that? Because God can use any one of us. I thank God for that today. Matter of fact, I'm glad you know that you may not look the best. You may not be dressed the best. You, you, you may not speak the loudest. But guess what? God is able to use every one of us. I love what I just read because what I just read will remind me. I heard it three times in this text that the Lord proclaims, I am God. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I can end right now because if I know that God is never short on his promises, I got to declare that he is who he says he is. He said, I am the Lord. And if I allow him to be Lord over my life, I am allowing him to take over my life. And if I know that he's Lord over my life and he takes over every situation in my life, he'll lead me to great pastures. He'll lead me through the still waters. He'll, he'll lead me even through the, sh the shadow, of the, the, the valley of the shadow of death. He'll take me through whatever I go through because he is the Lord. How do I know? How do I know that God will keep his promises? Real quick, pilgrim and Mount Zion, real quick. Here it is. When I look at verse number one, as the Lord is speaking to Moses, the Lord said to Moses, now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. Stop. He didn't say, Moses, you take care of Pharaoh. He did not say, Moses, you whip up on Pharaoh. Well, he no good. He ain't right. He did not say. He said, Moses, pay attention. Watch what I do to Pharaoh. I'm about to shout in here. Because sometimes we take the burden on ourselves and want to fight these battles. But can I remind you, the Bible declared, the battle is not yours. You, you might have to stand in 
in your battle. You, you may have to fight sometimes. But he said, if you understand that I am the Lord, the battle is not yours. Watch me. Watch. See what I'm going to do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand, not only will he release the children of Israel from bondage, but he will also set them free. And as he set them free, he says he will push them out. They're not supposed to happen. They're slaves. They're in a position where they must pay attention to the master. Of them. Okay, stop. I got to talk to you today. Because the Lord is speaking to the church in a great way today. There are too many masters in the church. There are too many folk who believe that they are in charge of the church. But this is the church belongs to God. And I want you to know today that since the church belongs to God, watch what the Lord will do to the enemy. Because anything, anytime you stand up against God, even time you stand up against the leader, guess what's going to happen to you? You become an enemy of God, and God will take care of you. Because he says something in this text, the reason I know that God has never shot on his promises is this. Number one, he'll take us through frustrations. If you are a slave, and you've been enslaved for all of these years. I know you get comfortable with being a slave because that's all you know is this. you become a slave and you 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 begin to develop a slave mentality. Yeah. Because you have a slave mentality, you're frustrated. And because you're frustrated, I want you to know something about God. I kept reading. And verse 2. And God spoke to Moses and said to Moses, I am the Lord. He saw. Yes. So he has already answered any question that he already know the end points from the beginning. He has already worked it out. Because sometimes God will put us through something that we can't handle on our own. Sometimes God will allow some things to happen in our lives where we must depend on him and him only. Sometimes God will put us in a place where if we don't know God for who he is, then we will go in the wrong direction. But sometimes God will put us through something not to weaken us, but to strengthen us. But he'll get us through our frustration down and out. Burned, troubled, guess what? Even through all that we go through, God still cares for us. I know he does. Because he cares about our anxiety. He cares about every time we mess up. He cares because not only has he promised us, I'll never leave or forsake you. But he promised us that if we lift him up, he'll draw. But not just that, he'll carry us because he is the Lord. He's the same God. And I like verse number, number three as well. I appear to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, Lord, I was not known to them. You better get to know him. Yeah. Not just know his name, yeah. uh -huh. but know him in relationship. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And if we get to know him in relationship, not only will he take us through our frustrations, but he'll take us to our freedom. Yeah. Yeah. It says, I have established this covenant. Covenant is a covenant that I made all the way back to the beginning of time. And in the beginning of time, the Lord told Abraham, He says, I will give you this land of milk and honey. I'll give you the promised land. But He also told Abraham in the Abrahamic covenant this. He said, Listen, those who bless you shall be blessed. Those who curse you shall be cursed. But what are you saying, Reverend? 
I'm saying when I looked at the text, I find that what God is actually saying, he says sometimes people should be in a position where they are in relationship with God, but instead they are strangers to God. Don't ever find yourself in a position that you are a stranger to God. I said not only will he take us through our frustration, but I also said he'll take us through and to our freedom. Freedom is to recognize today what John chapter 14 has always taught me. Number one, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But first of all, I must understand that he delivers. And as he, he will deliver, he first of all delivers us from sin, the penalty of sin. Because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, then a little light from heaven filled my soul, took my name from above, and, and he took me up to where he is because he said, just a little talk with Jesus will make it all right. Lord, I'll, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you who I am because I'm going to still take you to the same promise that I promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, although they really didn't recognize who I really was at that time. And so what I need you to understand, the laws, is this. When he gets to verse number five, he says this, and I have also heard the groanings or the cries of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians kept in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. He never forgets what he has promised. And I'm glad that I know that he's the same God. Yeah. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore because he'll take me through. If I'm frustrated, he'll take me to a place of joy. You know, it's James that tells us to count it all joy when you fall into divers to not if but when. Not might, but when struggles are going to come, times are going to come when it becomes relentless. That's it. What is going on now? Storms are always going to rage in our lives. But I read in the Word of God where it says, I'm going to keep my commandment to you that you will be blessed, that you will be covered, that the Lord will take care of us. Because not only will he show us that he can take us through frustration and give us back our joy, he'll set us free from whatever it is that has us in bondage, whatever it is that has us tied up or, or, or a place where we seem like we can't get out. He already told Moses, listen, Pharaoh is going to, is going to set them free. Because I'm going to speak through you. Not only that, but I read where he said that you and the children of Israel must recognize that I am the Lord. Yes. Then he said, as I, I they will be set free, I have already established the covenant and, and I will also bring the covenant to pass. Those who bless you will be blessed. Those who curse you will be cursed. I'm about to sit down. I'm about to fuck. Because now he begins to show them their future. Where do you see the future, Reverend? I can't read. Verse number six says, Therefore, Moses, don't give up yet. Say to the children, of Egyptians, I will rescue you from bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great
your God. If you're my people, I'm your God. But the, but the, that the Bible says something about if I draw near to him, he'll draw near to me. Yeah. If I get close to him, he'll be closer to me. I got to learn to call on his name. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brings you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. Many times our enemies try to burden us by stepping on us. Do you realize, brothers and sisters, that George Floyd is not the only one that someone knelt on his neck. Spiritually, folk will try to kneel on your neck. I know I'm right about it. Yeah. Try to prevent you from breathing.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for your word today, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this time of worship. Shower down your blessings upon our congregation, Lord. Lord, we need you like we have never needed you before. Allow us, God, to look to you. And if we look to you, God, we know that you will keep your promises. The covenant is true. The same covenant you give to the children of Israel is the same covenant that you give to us today. So thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for worship today. Lord, I thank you today. Whoever is listening in, someone who may not know you as Lord and Savior, your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, allow them today to accept Christ as their Savior and Lord and that they might be saved. I thank you, Lord. I bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So my brothers and sisters, if anyone is listening in and has never accepted Christ, this is very important. What's important is that you accept the fact that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. And if you confess that today, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, you shall be saved, but you must first confess, I am a sinner in need of a salvation. And when you do so, Christ will come into your heart. And not only will he come into your heart, but he'll reign in your heart. He walks with you. He'll talk with you and tell you that you are his own. So bless you. Accept him now. You don't have to be in this building and confess Christ right where you are and say, you know what? I need to be saved. And if that's you today, confess him now and you will be saved. Amen, 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 amen. Thank God for salvation. Amen. Amen. I'm just thinking about this little number before we, we share for those of those who are listening, um, who are going to share with me in the ordinance of communion. I'm just thinking about this song that says, yes, God is real. I love this song so much. And hey, man, you know, sometimes you need to be reminded that there are some things that I may not know. There are some places that I may not go. But yes, God is real. Or yes, I can feel it. There are some things that I may not know.
bring us through this. Look forward, I know, with great anticipation to the day when the Lord will, will allow us to come back into fellowship. But until then, wisdom says we shall continue to preach the word of God, share in worship, that you will receive the worship um, in your safe place. And so we thank you so much for remaining uh, vigilant to the call of our church. God bless you. God keep you. Worship is now ended. Enjoy your day. I hope you had a great celebration yesterday. Uh, bless you. God keep you. Bye.